paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A sermon. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be you to the fullest. Hello everybody and um, welcome to this edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Um, Larkin Rose um, recently did a really good job in explaining how politics is, you know, pretty much two wings, one bird. But there is one part in what he was saying that I think needs some clarification. I I feel he didn't um, clarify enough. So I am going to attempt to make that point clear. So <clears throat> I'm gonna play through, you know, what he said and then when we get to that point, you know, I'm going to stop it there, and then you're going to see me attempt to explain. Um, hopefully I do a better job. But um, before we get to that, I'm just going to say briefly that the context of what I feel that he wasn't clear enough on is um, when he talks about um, ignoring the politicians and making them irrelevant in order to move into into change that you want. Um, obviously, if you ignore a problem, it does not make it go away. That is not the context in which he is speaking. Um, he's basically referring to the expansion of new and better ideas catching on, becoming more trendy and implemented more wide scale so that that which is obsolete and older then is used less and less and less until it essentially becomes irrelevant anymore. Um, but I'm going to explain that more in context of what he's talking about um, once we get to that point. So um, I'm going to let him take it from here. And then when he gets to that part, I'll stop it, and it'll be back to me again, then back to him again. All right, here we go. How many times has that happened where a tyrant comes along who pretends I'm not part of the system and I'm an outside force and all this and this and that and the other thing? Basically doing what Hitler did, saying the establishment and what we have now is horrible, put me in power and I'll fix it. And what's been particularly annoying is to see a bunch of people who say they believe in freedom falling for the lie that's been used for centuries, and it's the exact same template every single time and the fact that even some people who call themselves anarchists are going rah 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 this is worth going rah 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 about that they don't recognize the pattern that's happened a zillion times before it's kind of frustrating and if the discussion is how government violence should be used the answer doesn't matter you failed ross perot is another example of well at least he isn't the same cookie cutter politician liar you know that doesn't ever say anything at least he says something at least he says what he believes in and yada 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 um, and people don't bother to pay attention to what he's yeah. actually saying. <laughs> but because he's not one of the politicians, as far as they can perceive, then he's seen as an outsider. And they, they imagine that means he's something different. It just means he's a different flavor of control freak. But it's, you know, that's refreshing for somebody to find somebody who says what he actually thinks. And unfortunately, that it's sometimes that refreshingness makes people ignore like what the actual message is. And they're just, well, at least he's anti-establishment. And ultimately, he's not. He would just be a different establishment. Yeah. And you know, it's only happened about a zillion times in history where you have, you know, like Che Guevara, people sell Che shirts, um, and, and Castro, like we're against the evil empire until we are the evil empire. 
Um, having been an anarchist for 20 years, I can say there is a massive increase in recent years. The, the Donald Trump phenomenon doesn't matter. In the long run, it's an absolutely irrelevant glitch, in, including, you know, including a bunch of pro-freedom people who are going rah, 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 and think he matters. He doesn't matter. What matters is the underlying philosophy of people, and there are way more people understanding the concepts of self-ownership and non-aggression and things like that than there were just a few short years ago. Ultimately, that's what matters. The political process never matters in the long run. The game, who's on the throne, even empires, you know, rising and falling. In the end, what determines it is what the people believe and what the people think. That is changing in the right direction, regardless of the stupid circus that goes on in, the, in elections and all that stupidity, you know, in the U.S. and around the world. Ultimately, that isn't what matters. It's what's between the ears of 8 billion people, and that is going in the right direction. The solution is in people's minds. If people understand freedom, they not only do they stop participating in the system, they stop paying any attention to it. It's sort of like, okay, there's a mafia over there, and occasionally they pester us, but we're not going to get all gung-ho about the next election for mafia, Don. It really doesn't matter. That has nothing to do with the direction humanity has to go in. And the unfortunate phenomenon is that there are so many people, like I, I like to use the ring of power as an analogy, like I did in my talk here. Um, and there's so many people who, if they get scared enough of something, like, oh, scary immigrants coming in or Muslims or something, they will jump for the ring of power. This guy's going to use government power for good stuff. And it always backfires and it always turns into authoritarian disaster. Um, but still, there can be a... a the, the attitude changing underneath that, people, like, they don't have to fix government, they have to learn how to ignore it and function without even paying attention to it, yeah. which is completely, like, the, you'll know the political process did, like, we have the political solution when nobody pays any attention to politics. Okay, obviously you cannot ignore a problem and make it go away. You can't be like, oh, well, we're just going to ignore that our food's being poisoned and we're being poisoned with chemical drugs and the water's being poisoned and big corporations are sending the environment you know to hell for profit and warmongering governments are bombing little kids over the world all over the world and, you know well if we just if we just ignore that that you know that's that's just gonna magically go away and you know that's not what he's saying it's not like the the um, misunderstanding that a lot of the new agers have of, oh, what you resist persists, so, you know, if you pay attention to the dark, then you're giving it your power, so we have to shun the dark and, and, and ignore it, and then it won't have any power over us or over the world. No, as Vinny Eastwood said on a, on a previous PSEC episode, um, it is the resistance against the knowledge that something is happening and the resistance against formulating the solutions to those problems that then allows those problems to persist. So this is not what Larkin Rose is, is suggesting. He's not suggesting to go into these logical fallacies. What he's suggesting is more like this. Um, when cell phones were invented or the internet came into being, or, you know, modern cars as, as we know them these days, you know, have um, perpetuated. No one took a vote. No one said, okay, we have this idea and we're going to vote a politician into office and we're going to go through these political processes and, you know, if we don't get the votes, well then, um, I guess we're just going to stay with the Model T, you know, no uh, vote. Better cars were voted down. We're just going to stay with the Model T forever. Oh, we're just not going to invent cell phones because, you know, we didn't get enough votes at the polls, so we may as well just forget the whole idea. Or, no, sorry, we're, we're not going to invent the Internet because, you know, this is 1975 when we're casting this vote and, you know, people think the idea of... of thoughts and images and, and, and video and multimedia and music being transferred o over this this magical grid of science fiction is just ludicrous garbage so yeah no we're just we're not gonna we're not gonna create that it it was voted down so hey you know what can we do um obviously that's not how these things came to be um these things were invented 
and they caught on and they evolved and it was a natural evolution and as these things caught on more and evolved and more people started using them you know they were able to continue to advance and become better and so on and so forth which is why there's the internet and computers and we're not all stuck on landline phones anymore and we're not all driving around in in model t's and you know we have things like uh, jet planes and expressways and you know all this wonderful stuff that you know most of us tend to take for granted um we have all these things as a result of a natural evolution and it's not like we just said oh well fuck it you know there was no there was no vote taken and as things evolved in the direction that they led up to and here we are now in you know 2016 and ta-da um the stuff that became more and more obsolete um it wasn't being paid attention to as larkin rose said um it just kept being used less and less and less and less and basically ended up being ignored out of existence um just like larkin rose is talking about so as more and more people start catching on to the idea that politics is just, you know, two wings of one bird, it's a left-right paradigm scam, it's WWE wrestling, Stone Cold versus The Rock, and Vince McMahon wins no matter what because he owns the corporation. Um, you know, the more people realizes, realizes the scam, the game, the bullshit, and people start taking personal responsibility and thinking for themselves and using their own imagination and creativity and taking more personal responsibility instead of thinking that they're just so entitled and that the world owes them everything and that you know we have to elect babysitters that we can whine to and we can cry to and demand things of you know the more we move out of that mentality and move into the mentality of hey I have this idea, and instead of having low self-esteem because I'm thinking, poor little me, I'm, I'm just me, I'm, I'm nobody, you know, what, what could I do, you know, who am I, that, you know, we give our ideas a reasonable shot and put them out there and, and allow for, the, for our time and our pace, because things don't happen overnight. People are so impatient, they're thinking, oh, if I can't make something happen, boom, like that. Well, I'm not capable of it. I planted the tree seed today. I don't have the 40-foot tree tomorrow, so fuck it. You know, I'm just not capable. I may as well just call it quits. And that's the mentality of most people today. So they think they have to have their their um, selected misleaders, um, you know, up there lording it over them so they have babysitters to cry to. And, you know, that's why we have all these political correctness and safe space and wah, 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 I'm entitled, pooty poo, if you're white, you're racist, and you're sexist if you disagree with women, and wah, wah, wah. You know, that's why we have all that attitude. And the more people who move out of that attitude and become more empowered and realize that we're not all little helpless nobodies and that if we could actually learn to apply ourselves and cooperate with each other instead of bickering and bitching and pissing and moaning and hey most people think 9-11 was an inside job so do we get together and unite and investigate no we're bickering over well was it a death ray or fake planes or a big ginormous penis that slammed into the world trade center and fucking raped it into the ground or aliens or oh well, what was it? Well, it's like everybody is arguing over the semantics instead of getting together and, you know, getting real investigation going. So, as soon as enough of us exit that baby phase and that ego phase and actually start to learn, you know, it's actually, it's actually better if I take personal responsibility. That's actually how I can gain some control over my life instead of making demands of fucking babysitters then yeah we're gonna start seeing more and more of a change just like as more and more people stopped using model t's and old technologies and slowly started embracing the newer technologies that eventually fast forward to 2015 here we are and obviously civilization doesn't look like 1935 anymore because that was then and this is now and there's a process of evolution over time 
So that is what Larkin Rose is trying to say. He's not trying to say, oh, if we ignore the cockroaches in the walls, they'll stop breeding. No, you ignore the fact that you know, they're there as far as, like, don't freak yourself out about it, don't panic yourself. And now that you're in that state of calm, you can pick up the phone and you can call the Orkin Man and say, Hey, Orkin Man, um, I need your, your exterminator services over here because, you know, I got these roaches, so, yeah, gotta kinda, kinda need to get something done. So, yeah, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about a process over time. This isn't gonna happen overnight, and... You know, when all of this is going to come to fruition enough that we're really living in a very different world and we're looking back at, you know, this time in history now and laughing our asses off about how immature and insecure we were, well, I don't know when that's going to happen, but, you know, do I think it'll be in our lifetime? Fuck yeah. But is it going to happen tomorrow? Probably not. So with that said, I bring you back to Larkin Rose. When they just completely ignore it. And ultimately, when enough people believe in freedom, you can literally ignore an empire out of existence. Yeah. Like if everyone just, we, we ignore your laws, we ignore your taxes, we don't care what you think, we don't even pay attention. We don't even know who the president is. I mean, none of that matters to our yeah. lives. I don't care who the mafia Don is. I own myself, my neighbor owns himself, and we get along like adult human beings. There's sort of two sides of it. You know, if people think we have to go do something to government, it's because they don't understand the problem. Again, the problem is in people's heads and the solution is in people's heads. However, in the meantime, sometimes there are situations where you do have to resort to, to violent defense against government aggressors. Um, but that's different than revolution. That's just, we're not going to let you attack me. Um, but yeah, as long as people believe in government, if you knock over the current regime, they'll build a new one. And, you know, historically speaking, usually they'll build an even worse one than what they had before. Um, but there is, I think there's a massive amount of progress happening of people uh, outgrowing that, outgrowing that whole lie and realizing that that's not, you know, the way out of this is basically to build a society that doesn't care what the rulers are doing, whether you're talking about economically with Bitcoin and, and trading on the, the dark web and all that, and you know, however many different ways you can find to live your life in a way that the politicians don't matter and have nothing to do with you. That is the road to freedom. All of the political circus is just a joke. It's just a distraction. Um, but ultimately it doesn't matter. And it's mattering less and less, which is why the system has to get louder and louder about, you have to vote, it's really important, blah, blah, blah. Because the last thing they, like, they don't care if people go and protest. If they see people out in front of their offices protesting, that means the people are still begging them for permission. The day the politicians are scared is the day they look out and nobody's there because nobody cares what they think. Nobody's begging for permission. Nobody's paying any attention to them. That's the beginning of the end of tyranny. Yeah. It's not just possible, it's absolutely inevitable. Um, the lie of statism and authoritarianism is so inherently bogus that eventually there is, there is no way we won't get to a point where everybody understands it because the truth eventually outlives the lie. Um, at this rate, having watched this thing for 20 years and watched the increase recently, you know, I'm not going to guess an exact year, but in, I think in a matter of decades, the whole world is going to look very different than what it looks like now, and there will be so many people who understand self-ownership that there will be at least large patches of the globe where nobody claims authority and nobody there recognizes an authority. And then the rest of the world will learn by example, here's what humanity is supposed to be. And it may take a long time before it's the whole world. Um, but I think in, you know, unless we kick the bucket too soon, in our lifetime, we will see large patches of what society is supposed to be. No rulers, no slaves.